stock cycle, petrol engine, we talked about four stock cycle, diesel engine. Right, who can explain to us the, uh, what you understand by SI and CI? Spark engine. SI stands for? Petrol engine. Spark ignition, which is a petrol engine. And CI? Compression, Compression ignition, which is? Engine. Right, next question. What is a stroke? The one whole cycle. What's it called again? It's a cycle. It's not a revolution, it's one it's called. Cycle. Yeah, it's, it's, not, it's a cycle, but it's like. What's the, what's the high point and low point that it's called again? Um, yeah, I think. The, the, the pistol. A stroke. The pistol going up, going down. Distance. Between BDC and TDC. TDC, yes, that's strong. Right, um, the other question uh, What is the position of the valves during the compression stroke? <coughs> position of the valves, yes. Exhaust valve and in the compression. Yes, during the compression. Both valves are closed. Both valves are closed. And then maybe the last question: When does the spark occur? When do we have the spark plug fire? End of compression stroke. Just before the piston reaches TDC during the compression stroke, we have the spark plug. How many crankshaft revolutions do we have a spark plug or power stroke? Two. After every two crankshaft revolutions, we have a power stroke. Right, um, when I was uh, going back, I think I did not mention two things when we were doing um, materials. If you can just take this down, then we carry on with the power stroke. You know, when we were writing the properties of materials, we have tensile strength and the other one is compressive stress. Yeah. I thought I should mention this. Sorry to, like I said, I'll always be going forward and forward. to pull an object. Then compressive stress. to compress is to so those two terms if you can just add them all together. Do we have enough light in here? That's the same light. Are we fine? Okay. Right, so today, the plan for today, remember last week we did talk about the four-stroke cycle. Today we are going to talk about the two-stroke cycle engine. 
Then we are going to talk about um, firing order of the engine. Then maybe we talk about engine components. And if we still have time, we can talk about valve operating mechanisms. Right, so the two stroke cycle. <coughs> so we have four stroke petrol, four stroke diesel. Then we also have the, four, uh, the two stroke cycle engine. So the two stroke cycle engine, it was designed by somebody called Dugald Clerk. <coughs> it's also known as a Clerk cycle. Right, so the difference between the two stroke cycle and the four stroke cycle is that on the two stroke cycle, remember on the four stroke we have the intake valve and the exhaust valve. So on four stroke we have valves, but now on the two stroke cycle we do not have valves. What we have is we have what are known as ports. So on the two stroke cycle we have three ports. We have Okay, three ports, one port is called transfer, the other port is for intake, then the other port is for exhaust. So we have an intake port, we have exhaust, and we have a transfer. Instead of the valve, we have uh, ports. Right, so advantage of the two stroke over four stroke, it has got fewer parts, valves missing, valve operating mechanism is not there. Also, there's no camshaft, and also a lighter plywood. Only the main reason is on the difference of the part, the weight of the engine. And you find the two-stroke cycle, which unit is two-stroke? The? Vehicle uses yeah, or motorcycles. motorcycles, yes, the lawn mowers, they use the two-stroke cycle engine. So Dugout Clerk uh, designed that engine. That same gentleman is the same gentleman who designed the supercharger. You know, we have table chargers and super yeah. is the same man who designed the supercharger, Dugout Clerk. So we are going to have a look at how the two-stroke cycle works. Sorry, we give us handouts, but we do not know the list. I will give you handouts. Right. On the board, I have sketches of the two-stroke cycle. <coughs> So same thing on the two-stroke cycle, we have a spark plug, that's our cylinder, and this is the piston connecting rod. So at the bottom there, we have what is known as a crank case. So what happens during the two-stroke cycle, we have a spark plug every revolution of the crankshaft, which is another difference with the four stroke cycle. On the four stroke cycle, we only have a spark after every two revolutions. But on this one, we have a spark only every, every revolution. Right, so the ports are, we have that one, the intake port, we have that one, the exhaust one, then we have this port here, the transfer port. So it means a complete cycle is done in two strokes. Remember we said a stroke is the distance moved by a piston from TDC to VDC or vice versa. So the whole cycle is done in just two movements of the piston. Right, so where can we start? Maybe, okay. If we look at this picture there, this one, right? 
induction. Right? When the piston is at the top there, it is the movement of the piston which will either, op either open or close the valve. It is the piston itself which opens and closes the port. So at that position, we can see that that port there is closed, that other port is closed. Piston is going up. So when the piston is going up, we have air and petrol go through the intake into the crankcase. Can we see that? At the same time, we might be having air and fuel at the top there. So as the piston is moving up, it will be compressing that. At the same time, we'll be having air and petrol go into the crankcase. Then when the piston continues to go up, same thing, the spark plug will fire. And when the spark plug fires, the expanding gases will push the piston down. When the piston is being pushed down, we still have it coming off. When the piston is being pushed down, that port there, the exhaust port will open. Then exhaust gases will go out. At the same time, can you see that as the piston will move further down, it is compressing the mixture in the crankcase. Can we see that? So exhaust gases will go out during the downward movement of the piston. I will go back to the first two sketches. As the piston continues to move down, exhaust gases leave in the cylinder. Disadvantage of the two stroke now, can you see that the exhaust port is open? This is also open. So there is tendency that the air fuel mixture, the new one, will mix with the exhaust gases. Can you see that? This port here is open. Exhaust gases are going out. So as a result, a two-stroke engine has high emissions because some of the petrol which is going in there is just leaving the cylinder because the exhaust port is also open. So at that point, in the port is closed, exhaust port open, exhaust gases leaving the cylinder. Are we okay with the two strokes? Yes. Are you sure? Uh, okay, I'll, I'll do it the other way. I will do it the other way. Elsie, have you got handouts for this? Yes, I have. Is it hard? No. <coughs> I just got to read it. It is interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Not hard. Uh, two strokes, two strokes. There's a lot going on at the same time in the future. Mm -hmm. Let me move. Right, uh, well, what's a two-stroke car? What's two stroke cars in it? There aren't no two stroke cars. Bikes and the Yeah, it's also it's like it's a little capacity. Oh is it? That pet's in there. Yeah, it pets. Gasoline engine. The piston moves up the cylinder. The top of the piston covers the exhaust port and the bottom uncovers the inlet port. Air fuel mixture enters and circulates in the sealed crankcase below the piston. The piston rises and compresses the mixture above it. A spark plug ignites the mixture and it burns. Pressure from the expanding gases pushes the piston down in a power stroke. The top of the piston uncovers the exhaust port and lets exhaust gases escape. The bottom of the piston covers the inlet port and forces air fuel mixture up into the now open transfer port. The piston reaches bottom dead center and the crankshaft forces it back up to repeat the process. Notice which events occur above the piston. Compression of the air fuel mixture into the combustion chamber. Combustion of the power stroke. And then scavenging of the exhaust gases. Notice the events that occur below the piston intake into the crankcase, recompression of the air fuel mixture in the crankcase, and then the transfer of mixture from the crankcase through the transfer port 
and into the combustion chamber. Where's the transfer phase on the left? The transfer port will be here. This one. On one side, it will be having intake, exhaust and intake. Then on the other side, the transfer. So what's, what's the difference with the, the four stroke the inlet thing and the things at the top are? On the four stroke cycle, on the four stroke cycle, we have the valves. Can you see the valves? Oh yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Right? Then on the two stroke now, there is no valve. We have ports. One, two, three. And what covers and uncovers the ports is the movement of the piston. At that position, the piston is uncovered, that port and that port. At this position, this port is covered, that one is covered, this one is open. So it is the movement of the piston which is covering and uncovering the ports. So this is four stroke, our valves, our piston, our connecting rods. This is now two stroke. We have our transfer port, exhaust, exhaust and intake. So you will find the difference on the shape of the piston for the two stroke and for the four stroke. Can you see that the four stroke piston is flat then the two stroke one piston is what that deflector or that shape there. Right? The purpose of that deflector or this shape here, remember when I said there is chance that the uh, new air fuel mixture will mix with the exhaust gases. So this shape of the piston tries to prevent that. So engineers, they've decided to put a deflector on the piston to stop at least a quantity of new air charge mixing with the exhaust. And also the deflector will help the, to deflect the exhaust gases out. Right. Um, give you a handout then to look at the positions together then maybe we might understand 